So I'm guessing if I just you know, I'll spray some stuff on here because it's been uh, 5,000 years since it's moved. <clears throat> yeah, that's stuck there pretty good. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to futz with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Hey there, I'm Jer, and welcome back to the Dirty Gertie Revival Series. Now that I actually have Dirty Gertie turned into a car, I get to do fun things with her. But I'm still having some starting issues with the car. This time it's not an electrical or a carburetor issue, it's actually the starter. Uh, what happens is when I turn the key, the starter spins, but it doesn't engage the flywheel. So it just goes ring and nothing happens, sometimes. So instead of buying a new starter, I'm just gonna try to fix this one first. Randy gave me a bunch of extra parts uh, for the car when I first got it, and one of the extra parts was an old starter. I have already harvested some parts out of the inside of it. I've already taken the brushes out and put it in the starter, and that helped with a different issue. So now I'm hoping I can get something else out of this starter, put it in this starter, and then it will be good as new again. And for some reason, this footage is in potato vision. <laughs> I don't know why. What I'm gonna do is try to replace, I believe this is called the Bendix. Uh, I think that's really the last thing that could be causing my uh, problem with the starter staying engaged uh, properly on the car. So I'm gonna swap these. Um, there's a little weird clip that's down inside of here. I think I just have to separate it and that will pop off and then I can swap these. So I'm gonna play with this bad one first because this is the one I got with the car. You can see how there's a little bit of rust issues in there, but everything else I've been pulling off of it has been good, so I'm assuming that's going to be good too. So I'm going to pull it, swap it, throw it back in the car again, and see how it runs. All right, when in doubt, consult the shop manual. So the snap ring and retainer are separated. So I'm like, well, maybe this, this snap ring, this retainer thing just slides down. Sure enough, Got me a socket, put it over the top of it, whacked it one time with a hammer, and now it slid down and now I can get to that snap ring because I'm like, I cannot get that thing off with that stupid retainer. Now I can get the dang thing apart. Bam. Okay, so here's the uh, better one, disassembled, and it's got this grease on it, and this one's dry, and uh, this thing talks about using oil uh, on it, like whatever number 20 oil is. Um, so I think that's the problem is it's got grease on it and that's what's making it stick. So I'm going to clean that off and uh, just put in some WD-40 or something and uh, remove that grease because it was all stuck up here too. I couldn't get the uh, uh, this uh, shim off of it either because it was so bunched up. So maybe that's what's causing the problem. It's not coming all the way out because it's all gummed up in there. So I'm going to clean it, put in that one and put it back together. Okay, it's reassembled the second time because the first time I had this little stupid washer backwards and there was a gap. I'm like, hmm, that doesn't seem right. So what you're supposed to do with that little washer is do 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 do. Assemble the thrust collar with the shoulder next to the snap ring because it kind of goes together and it creates a, a seal around that um, snap ring for whatever reason. So I, yeah, I had that to thrust collar backwards. So now it's back together and I'm ready to throw it back in the car and see what happens again. All right, check this out. Whoa, it is so much better. Let me fire it up. Hey, all right. You even started, okay. Right on, that's much better. That cost me zero, yes. Nice! Well, that was a success! Yay! Usually with starters, it's just the brushes that go out and all you have to do is buy some new brushes and put them on the inside. So the next time you're having an issue with your starter, just take it apart and see what's going on. You honestly have nothing to lose by doing that. 
Plus, like I said, you can buy brushes. I think they're like $5 and they're from like 1930 till the 80s. So they're going to have these things around forever. So you can just do a little bit of work to your starter and probably have a better one than buying a brand new one from China. One of the things that was included with the car's pile of parts when I first bought it was some extra weather stripping. I want this car to be waterproof at some point so I can park the thing outside. So the next thing on the list is to install the weather stripping. All right, here I am on uh, day two of finishing up this door, putting the weather strip on it. Um, yesterday I scotch brighted the surface underneath, took off all the old stuff. It's amazing how well the old one works when it's 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 just held on by clips. So I started on it yesterday, got almost done, had a friend came over and by the time she got over here I was already frustrated and I just wanted to be done. So I just needed to do this little part from, you know, this 25%. And that was easy. I busted that out in 10 minutes. So this all up here and down around the bottom, that's all dry. This will be dry tomorrow. Um, I got most of it done pretty good. Uh, a couple of these inside spots need to get a little closer, so that's what I'm doing right here. So that part will be better by tomorrow, those little gap right below it. I'll do the same thing on that tomorrow, so then that will be another day. But you really got to take your time with this stuff because um, I tried to hurry it on my 57 and it just never worked right. So I'm just going to do it a, a bit at a time. This J-Seal, it's still here and same thing, it's just held on with these clips and that's it. So I put some glue here on the top. Um, it probably needs to be replaced, but eh, good enough for now. I'm guessing it's just the pressure that holds that in is why it's just uh, just glued on. Uh, the back door, it's a bit interesting. There's a story back here and I don't know what that story is. So this back door, it's been painted. It's been painted all the way around um, and clean and it has it has a weather stripping on it, but you know, obviously it's not glued down, so it's not gonna work. So I'm going to uh, pull all these rivets back out and start gluing it back together. Maybe get half of it done today. It just depends on how much I get done. Uh, but yeah, I'll start the process on this and then finish this door tomorrow and then that door tomorrow and this whole side will be done. The 3M weather stripping glue is kind of like contact cement. You, you apply it to one surface and then to another surface and let them dry for a tiny bit and then you put them together. Okay, here we go. Gertie progress report for today. So started doing the weather stripping on the other side. Uh, started doing, I was doing it way more methodically. I was doing like two or three sections at a time and it worked much better because you know the glues you know, you put it on both sides, let it dry for a second, and then adhere it, and then it seems to stick really, really well. So I've got the uh, the easy parts, the outside part of both this door and um, the back door done. I still need to do the insides. Uh, the reason why I didn't do that is because I can't open the door all the way because my other car is here. So I need to, uh, I don't know, I guess I'll wait till tomorrow and either scoot the car over or drive it in backwards, I don't know. So the other thing I did was start putting together the trim on the inside. So I have this extra piece of trim. So this is the piece that goes uh, like that next to the driver's side of the, your head. So uh, yeah, so that's all put together inside of here now. So now I got this trim going all around the window like it's supposed to be. I mean, it's not like it looks better in here, but it's better. Uh, that piece is missing, can't flip it. So I'm missing the middle piece, don't know where that is. Uh, might be somewhere in the car. Um, oh, I put the uh, sun visors up, so those are up. Uh, sunglass clip now, so now I've got sun visors in the car. They're installed, they work. Um, I cleaned all the extra fiber and stuff that was still attached to them off. So those are good now. Uh, the back seat's nice and cleaned out. So there we go. So I still need to mess with the light. Um, that's a piece that I have down there that I'm going to mess with later. And I believe that is all the, imp oh, I also put the stick shift mechanism on the cover and it gets in the way of my stupid uh, uh, beverage container thing. So that's a bum deal. So that's not permanently mounted at all. It's just, you know, basically screwed into the carpet just to see what it would be like. This side is just about done. So this, the back side's all new. The front side is 
the first time. So I still need to redo the front and I need to redo or finish the front um, on the other side. So I'll do that uh, tomorrow. Okay, I wanted to document this because this is probably the last uh, one of these I'm going to see for a while. Um, so this is the original piece and notice it's just set in there. I mean, I found some glue around the corners. I don't know if that's been reapplied or if uh, that's original or not. But most of it is just held in place because there's a solid wire that goes through this entire thing. So it just pops right off. Wiggle, wiggle. See, look at this. Look how easy this thing comes off. Uh, well, mostly. Oh, there's my screwdriver. So I had all the uh, original uh, weather stripping on there. It all pulled off in one piece. What I wanted to show you was how it, uh, it, it's got a wire inside of it and that wire helps to keep the pressure down in between where these grooves are, or where they snap in. Uh, cause the new one is just junk. It's just junk, junk, junk and glue and it just doesn't seem to work right. I don't think this thing was really glued in at all. And if it was, it was very sparingly cause I did find some grooves, some glue around the corners of the door. I don't know if that's OEM or if someone did that later when it came loose or something like that. But now it'll be easy to knock that out. So I'm just going to scotch bright the inside parts here. Scotch bright all this. Do, 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 do. And uh, wipe it off with grease and wax remover and then put, the, put it on and be easy peasy. What I started doing with the front door that really helped out a lot. So it's got these dumb clips and these stupid clips. Anyway, so it's got little dimples on it, so you push it in and it holds it. i just been flattening them out. I just get a screwdriver and go, ah, 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 or, you know, a pair of pliers and smash these all down. And then they slide in much easier because they're really not holding anything in because the damn thing's held on by glue. I'd just rather have them be a guide. And then they, once they're in there, the glue does a good job. So do glue both sides, let it sit for a second. What's been doing really good for me is to, to wipe it on both sides with my finger and then wait like maybe 10, 15 seconds, and then it just seems to adhere really, really well doing that. So, last little bit of this door, and I'll be done for the day. I was doing this in small sections and a little bit at a time because I didn't want to mess it up. So I was just doing like a corner and then a straight piece and then a corner and a straight piece. And it basically took several days to do it that way, but it did go on correctly. And after several days, I finally got all the door weather stripping done. Yay! Next on the list. I ordered the cheapest glove box that I could possibly find, and I installed it. All right, check it out. We got ourselves a glove box. So that's uh, installed. Got that for, I don't know, 25, 30 bucks. Oh, there it is. So I don't have it, uh, I don't have a, a light for it. I'll get a light later, probably. I need to get little bumpers in here. I need a lot of, a lot of rubber for this car. So I gotta get these bumpers in here. It actually closes just fine. It closes and opens better than you'd expect. It's like this lock cylinder probably just needs, it's not popping all the way out like it should. It probably just needs a, oh, I don't know, some silicon spray or something. Uh, the weather strip's all dried up and uh, gonna take the car uh, for another drive today. Gonna go to the Hungry Onion and uh, get me some burgers and uh, see how she does. And then I went back to the Hungry Onion and got me some more burgers. The last thing on the list for this episode is the door locks. It's absolutely beautiful today. It's a few days before Christmas and it's almost 60 degrees. So I'm out here working on Gertie. So what I got going on is doors. So right now this frozen that one's frozen. I believe that side's frozen too. That one kind of works. And the key actually works in that cylinder, not in this cylinder. So I'm taking all the doors apart. Going to get the uh, locking net mechanisms fixed on all of them so they all work and they all lock. So that way I can lock this car. And uh, I'm also probably going to have to get this key. I'll pull out the lock cylinder and see if I need to get it keyed for later. So that's what I'm going to be doing for right now. Really kind of wondering if this has ever been taken off. That piece came out. It was actually on here really good. The the trim. And uh, all these staples are still attached. So 
I think this is, uh, I don't think, I don't know if this door card's ever been pulled off or not. Let's see what's underneath here. Well, there's my answer. It's definitely been uh, off before because someone put duct tape <laughs> on all these holes. Um, I have uh, this metal tape that I'll use instead. But uh, yeah, it's been off before, so now I'm going to play with the uh, mechanism uh, in the door lock and uh, probably just needs to be lubed because it's just all, it's a little, little rusty in there, as you can see. So I will uh, silicone spray it and uh, put it back together. All right, back door is fixed. So just needed a... Some good silicon spray on this mechanism. Now it works fine. It was sticking really bad before. It's working really good now. Push button works. Everything works. So I'm going to put this one back together. Maybe I'll be able to find one. Because it's missing this little rubber guy that goes on there. I might have a spare one. Who knows? Okay, so here's a good example. I mean, that's just completely frozen over there. It's not moving at all. So I'm guessing if I just I'll spray some stuff on here because it's been uh, 5,000 years since it's moved, it might come free. So if I unlock that. Yeah, that's stuck there pretty good. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to futz with that one. <laughs> that one's on there. Oh, there it goes. Oh, it's already moving. Okay, it's already moving. Just need to keep going with it. So yeah, just do that, and it will. That see, it's already moving. Oh, I just gotta, just gotta really keep at it. Okay. Uh, you get the idea. So I'll roll down this window and put some goop in there. Okay, so check this out. All four doors are locked. That side's locked. This side's locked. Can't get in. Try the key. Do, 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 do. Bam. Unlocks. Locks. Bam. Okay, so that's this side. This side works. Now the newly fixed passenger side. So it was jammed. I just needed to soak it overnight with uh, oil. Now it's working better than the driver's side. Because in fairness, I didn't take the driver's side apart and oil it. I did these three doors, but I didn't do that one. Because um, I think I've had that door card off before. I think I've already played in there, so I think I've already done it. Um, but it could probably use it some more. But anyway, so like this knob, this handle was loose. It's tightened now. So all the doors are locked. So I still can't leave it outside because there is no weather stripping in the trunk yet. But the door weather stripping is done. Um, yeah, so we're getting close. Need tires. Need windshield wiper motor. Uh, that windshield uh, trunk molding. And then it could be left outside, but I'll put the cover on it, and that's probably what I will do. And then, uh, here we go. Because now I've got, uh, got a different car in the shop. Got my Fiero in there, so I'll be playing with that over the next uh, couple weeks of winter. So with a little bit of patience and a whole lot of silicone spray, the door locks are now working. Yay! Coming up in the next episode... Gonna finally start working on that fuel gauge. Going to install the door bumpers now that the weather stripping is installed. And another thing that you need to deal with in the water is the wiper motor. So that is also coming up. So make sure you subscribe if you'd like to see that video or anything else I have coming up on the channel. If you have any feedback for me, please go ahead and just leave those in the comment section below or if you just have a general question. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on the Dirty Gertie adventure thus far. Have a fantastic day and get out and drive those Tri-Fives.